car dropped off on Saturday and basically what I'm working on is just pre-assemble this turbo just make sure I'm not missing any parts and there's no like fitment issues this is the EVO 8 slash 9 ISR kit and um, he's using the 20G twin scroll and uh, never installed this before uh, tuned these before but uh, never installed it these are the products that uh, customers supplied so just uh, had to just kind of go through the whole port and he actually did some research and uh, got me all the gaskets and stuff like that but I'm already seeing some missing ports uh, just because the, the kit doesn't come with it it's not like the customer actually made a mistake or anything but since these two aren't like really like as a package it's missing a bunch of, bunch of bolts or studs for this so I had to go out and actually get some studs for this and also if we're using the studs then obviously I'll need uh, some nuts for that and also the bolts to the O2 housing so to the uh, flange to the manifold is missing studs and also these bolts like for studs for the O2 housing isn't included either so that I had to figure it out I also need to weld another bunk here for the uh, Y band to me these two are like too close to together which isn't a big deal but Sometimes, you know, you put an auto sensor and they're just too like closely together that they can't really read when they're installed. So the next one won't be able to have a, like the accurate reading. Um, the manifold looks fine. Um, I mean, these are nice welds, whatever, but I don't know what it is, but I just realized that um, they're just like kind of fake welds around just to make it look pretty because if you look closely the welds actually finishes here so whatever they could get to after they like coat whatever with and they just weld it around to make it a little bit nicer I mean not complaining but you, you see what I'm in here this weld kind of stops here and that's actually the, the real welds under this coating here but overall, you know, pretty well made kit. I'll find out for sure once I install it. But I want to pre-assemble everything, but I guess I have to go to hardware storage. I also need to actually modify this pipe. Uh, well, the flange here and install the Synapse uh, blow valve. So, Yeah, it just didn't come with the uh, extra flange, so I had to cut this one, which is gonna be a little bit of pain. But yeah, I'll get it done. So this is the cold side housing, and uh, basically what they give you is this little add-on thing. Well, now that we have to clock the turbo this way, facing, because a wastegate could only install it on this side and you're basically clocking the turbo from here to this way all right so got everything pretty much all the fittings back together what I've been doing is basically go back and forth just test fitting everything I'm trying to get the broom uh, my game my game plan now is to use uh, some uh, factory cola lines but since those lines are just extra long, I just kind of had to route it around and instead of going straight to the turbo, I'll make this line to go this way and the other one to do this way because it's like unless you modify the whole cone lines that's from factory, you won't be able to use this line. So I'm just going to make sure that it's not going to be under the turbo or where it's going to like be trapped and making a lot of heat but most likely this is going to generate a lot of heat regardless the actuator and it has to be located on this side so that when it pushes the flapper opens basically so I could be only at this angle so whoever welded it was on like Friday or something I'm very sure this elbow is supposed to be pointing 
um, this way instead. Like I said, so I have to either chop this, like turn it, and at the, at the same time maybe put a little slightly bigger diameter pipe so that, you know, I could just adapt another 90 degree fitting. I mean, 90 degree pipe. So it's just gonna be like, goop. I just don't feel like taking that pipe off and modify it right now, because that's just gonna be a lot of work. Six and a half hours later. I'm trying not to modify this mount. If I were to modify this one, I think it will make, make the job a lot easier, but since the arm is really long and I could only push at a certain angle, um, nothing actually will work instead of um, <clears throat> the actuator actually facing this way. But when I was mocking it up earlier, the actuator was really, really close to the frame, so I'm afraid that when the engine shakes, whatever, it will actually kind of bottom out. So I've been just clocking the turbo. Um, so according to the picture, what they suggest is pretty much having the wastegate, I mean the actuator facing this way, which should work out if I shorten this one and turn this arm here. But this head will actually bottom out to the frame. So you know what I'm talking about right here is they shouldn't have made this battle mount in the first place. If they did, maybe they could have made uh, external wastegate setup, or um, you know, put at least the actuator uh, located on this side. In this case, you can't really. You, you have to push out. So if you actually uh, locate the actuator here, you won't be able to push out because it's only gonna like push this flapper only. It won't even open up. Two thousand years. Later. All right, so as I suspected and confirmed earlier and I did a little bit of modification But I just confirmed again that this won't fit I'll show you right here right here the head it will be bottoming out to the frame and um, And you could also see the all the factory cool line here Is just right by the turbo so that needs to be matched in or modified. And the turbo is gonna be right above the motor mount. So this uh, is just garbage. Three weeks later. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense where you kind of relocate the actuator and gives uh, another bracket and this elbow actually shoots up. Like I've been complaining. And out of nowhere, so this is what the main picture shows. And just out of nowhere, this pipe, see how like it, it's flat? And this is what we got, right? So this shows up and this doesn't even line up because it's wider for the actuator head to mount up. And obviously it's not the same quality. I don't know whoever welded that, but I, I don't care. But uh, my point is I, I could... I could modify this no problem, but why the hell this thing showed up out of nowhere? But what's funny is, in their listing out of nowhere, where is it? And these aren't like really included, and see how they use like a heat rev and everything, which is not included. Like I'm not trying to bash anything. Like I'm, uh, and this is what what we needed, the return line fitting, which wasn't really included either. So my game plan is to make that pl um, flat surface to mount that um, actuator and I'll definitely have to modify this. So yeah, so I'm watching this guy um, on YouTube, Andrew, uh, we appreciate your video. So he got the same kit right here and he got the flat piece which makes a lot more sense in the uh, advertising on the jankoop.com actually shows that pipe so one hour later all right so i just chopped this off clean and i got some materials still on there just because you know the more the material just less welding i have to do uh so pretty much i have to just fill up like this and i'm gonna fill these holes too on each side and re-thread or i'm just gonna make this as uh, bolt and nut because uh, you know just 
too much of time that's needed and also um, I have to kind of add more fillers here to make it all together. I'll just heat it up. All right, so I was able to make the bracket. It still needs a little bit more work, but now it's going to be facing this way and also clear everything. All right, so it's the next day. I just had to be modified this bracket back to where it is because this is what the ISR actually suggests. So, like nothing wrong with the kit. Um, it's just they never had any instructions. And honestly, I couldn't really find any online. Like, I couldn't find anything online pretty much. Like, not many people actually have bottom. And uh, also, like I had some issues with like customers in the past like couldn't make it to the tuning events because they couldn't make it to fit so like i was really doubting the whole time i got a um i got a hold of uh, one of the salesperson that i saw and they kind of gave me all the instructions so the route i was gonna take was going to work but i'm just gonna follow what they suggest so what they actually suggest is actually cutting this bracket here and make another hole and just bolt it down this way. So I guess they have a different turbo for Evo 8 and 9. And if you were to go with the 9, 8, I'm not sure, then they'll, they'll give you the 90 degree elbow, whatever, 90 degree, degree bracket. So I had to be modified this thing, which was just pain in the ass. And I just had to uh, drill the uh, hole for this one. Finally got the uh, C-clip back in, it was uh, a bitch to do. So I just cut one of these off and made this, so I'm a savage. So I made it to work. Uh, just don't like this area that has like little sharp edges. It really has nothing to do with the performance or anything, but I'm just gonna make it nice and clean install. That's the whole point of the customers actually taking over here. But honestly, the way I see it is, the modification is kind of extreme, so some of the customers will not be able to install this like in a day or two. But now that I know what it needs to be done, I could probably get this done in a day. As long as the coolant line goes, no problem. So I'm just gonna grind this off a little bit, hence why I just kind of blocked it off so I don't have any debris. And while at it, I'm gonna actually shoot some air. I'm also gonna shoot some air to uh, make sure that all the preload on the actuator is the right and the flapper works and I'll show you guys how this thing works this one actually has a 14 pound spring I was told so as soon as you see it's 14 pounds we'll start moving and opening the flapper so that's how you actually control the uh, boost so that's just gonna be set at 14, maybe it'll spike to 15, 16 because there's a little bit of lag and that's where the preload comes into play. If you actually make this really tight, the flatboard will not open as much and you'll actually spike more and it will hold a more boost to the, you know, it will hold more boost toward to the uh, high RPM. All right, so the turbo is in. Everything's clocked the right way. Nothing's gonna bottom out. And the colon line, I think I figured it out. I just have to kind of mess with the stock colon lines here and there so it doesn't go too close to the turbo. The colon line is hooked up, the return line is hooked up. So everything is bolted down. I just got to get to one stud and nut. So these uh, runners are like so close to the block and you can't get to really the nuts easily, but you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. You know, I've seen worse already, so, you know, I'm not talking crap or anything, just giving you my, like, real thoughts uh, as I'm going through the kit and everything. Nothing's perfect. You know, there's always room for improvement. Anyway, uh, I'm just gonna stop here. Uh, it's weekend. I'll probably come in uh, half a day tomorrow. I have it till Monday, so my plan is to come in tomorrow, just finish up uh, whatever is left out install-wise make sure everything then i'll install that cat 
Uh, I'm putting on the dyno on Sunday if possible and hopefully that's tomorrow and uh, also tomorrow's gonna be nice and warm so it might be a good opportunity to do the um, custom tune so I'm just gonna stop here I'm thirsty I have no drinks at the shop I'm just gonna head home and uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the day with my kids thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one